All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP Envy X360 convertible model 15. This is really hard to read. It's really tiny. Model 15-DR1070WM. All right, we're going to be using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove the screws from the bottom. We're also going to need a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. All right, so let's go ahead and remove all the screws from the bottom. It looks like the customer already either removed the rubber feet or lost them. Um, you do need to remove those to get to these screws. They're hidden underneath. Usually I just use my fingernail. You can use a plastic pry tool or um, flathead screwdriver, whatever works for you. Peel that up. Make sure that you peel up the adhesive as well, not just the rubber strip. And then go ahead and remove all these screws. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. So we're removing the T5 or Torx 5 screw now. Also, I didn't mention, but you want to keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on the head so they don't roll around and I put them in the pattern I remove them. So you can see this one had five screws up here, then you got two here and one in the middle. So I'll usually put like the five there and then put that in like a row of three. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and open this up. The customer just needed the battery replaced. Oh, why is this Naruto blocking? Why is it on the keys? Were these keys falling out? I don't know, but they put them, okay, they intentionally put it there, so I'm not gonna peel it off. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my fingernails in the gap between the keyboard and the touchpad, and let's see if we can pop it out this way. No, probably not, and that's probably why there's all these screws back here, so we probably need to start from the back. So I'm gonna pull up from where the hinge is, okay? And you can see actually, okay, it popped up at least on that side pretty easily. This side I'm probably gonna have to like get some kind of tool to help with pulling the hinges. There we go. It's also pretty dusty it looks like. So there we go. And that's open. So pretty easy. I'm gonna get the dust out of here. It's pretty bad. Um, it looks like there's only one fan here for the CPU. There's no dedicated GPU here. You can see there's a place to put it, but there isn't one. And then there's no fan because there's no dedicated GPU. Anyways, I'm going to clean the dust out of this and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So as you can see, it's a lot cleaner inside now. We don't got all that fine brown dust all over everywhere. Okay, so this is going to be a very quick video because the customer is actually waiting outside. Hopefully we have the right battery. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to have to open this up and see because the customer wanted to replace the battery. Said it's having battery issues. Okay. And let's see. I did it. Ordered it based on the model number of the laptop. So it should be correct. It comes in this baggie here. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and pop that out. And it looks right, SA04XL, all right? So it looks the same. Uh, they covered the HP logo here for some reason, but there we go. All right, anyways. Sorry, some of the packaging fell out. Let me pick it up, all right. Anyways, let's go ahead and remove the battery. If your only thing is um, replacing the RAM or the SSD, you actually don't need to take out the battery for this, but you do want to make sure that the computer is off. Anyways, we're going to be removing the battery. So there's a few screws here. Okay. I don't know if I got a thumbnail there. I probably should have made sure. Okay. That'll be the thumbnail. Let's go ahead now and get all these screws out. <clears throat> okay. One, two, one more here, three. Four. And then again, keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. And also, if you're wondering, this battery I'm pretty sure also acts as the CMOS, BIOS, RTC, real time clock battery because I don't see one anywhere in here. So keep that in mind. If you remove this battery, your BIOS is going to get reset. All right, the way I remove this, since we got the thumbnail now, after we get all the screws out, let me zoom out here. Okay, you go from the corners here, if you can, get underneath, okay, and then pull this up just like that. Again, the battery model number, oh, be careful, there's a little peg here that you need to kind of lift straight up. The battery model number, again, is SA04XL. That's what the battery looks like. I'm going to toss that aside, and we'll get the replacement. Now that we have this open, might as well dust it a little bit more underneath from the battery. 
Okay, and we're gonna line this up and drop it in. Again, um, oops, I was lining it up with the wrong peg. <laughs> line that up, get this lined up, and then make sure you push that all together, and there we go. Now let's go ahead and get all these screws in. Okay. All right, and that's the battery installed, very simple. Um, if you're wondering, I'm gonna kind of go over all the little components. I'm not gonna pull everything out uh, because the customer just needed their battery replaced. So um, I don't need to take everything out. And if I do, there's always a risk of damaging things. So I'm gonna avoid taking out everything if I don't need to. Okay, um, here you can see there's all these connections here. Fingerprint uh, reader connector here. There's a flip latch to remove that here as well. If you're not sure how to remove these connectors, you can watch a few of my other videos. I talk about it and show it on a lot of the other ones. Um, there's a camera on off switch here. So this has a little cable going there as well. Um, I didn't, I should have checked when it was, when the battery was out, but I guess you can follow where the cables are going to find that out. All right, you got the keyboard backlight connector here, keyboard connector here. These all have the flip latches. Pretty sure this is the touchpad. Does it say here? Yeah, T-pad one, so touchpad, trackpad. You got this cable, pretty sure going to the SD card slot here. You got an M.2 PCA NVMe SSD here, one screw, then it goes up slightly, you can pull it out. Obviously the fan with the fan connector there. It looks like you can remove this fan without taking out the heatsink. Heatsink is on top of the CPU. Again, it's integrated GPU, so there's no graphics card there. RAM is hidden under here. I'll pop that open in a bit just to show you. You got this connector here going to the USB board as well as the power button. So if this USB port or the power button breaks, you can actually replace this board separately. Um, and then you got the DC jack charge port connector here, plugs in right there. Okay, um, to remove that, you do need to undo the hinge screws and then pop the hinge up slightly. Um, you got the LCD LVDS connector here. Very, very, very important. If you're gonna mess with this cable, um, disconnect the battery, open the laptop, make sure it's not plugged in, press and hold the power button at least 15 seconds, then you can go ahead and mess with this cable, all right? Some people are like, why do I need to do that? I, uh, like, there's people that do repairs all the time and they don't remove the battery first. If you pull it and it goes anywhere slightly at an angle, you're gonna fry the, the backlight circuit. You can fry this uh, connector, the cable, you can fry your screen. Just pull the battery out, <laughs> take that few seconds, okay? Um, for the other like SSD and RAM, it's not that critical. There's very little chance you're gonna damage anything. Well, if you're pulling this box off and you drop it on here, then you can damage stuff. So if you're not like, if you're kind of clumsy or you wanna be extra safe, you can pull the battery out as well, all right? So again, there's another speaker connector here, which has a wire running underneath to the speaker over here. Um, then you got the wireless card underneath the motherboard, logic board. You got this cable here, which is usually for the camera and possibly the microphone. It actually says cam one there. So yeah, everything else is soldered in place. Let me show you the RAM here now. So the way I get under here is I get my fingernail under a corner here. You can use like plastic pry tools or whatever. You gotta be careful again because this box is metallic and is conductive. So you don't wanna just lift this out and drop it on everything. But you can see it has a little adhesive that kind of holds it there. Why are they only using one slot? So there's two slots for RAM. They're only using one. You can pull these two tabs to the side and then it pops up and you can pull this out. And they're using uh, eight gig PC4 2666V. The customer, I would recommend they upgrade to a 16 gig, uh, add another eight gigs for 16 gigs total. Obviously it's not required, but if you use two sticks of RAM, you get, you get it to run in dual channel mode, which is a lot better than just running one stick of RAM. So I don't know why they did that. They should have used, it would have been faster if they used two four gig sticks. Um, but I guess it makes upgrading it cheaper because there's already an eight gig stick so you can just put another eight gig stick. So I guess in that way it's good. Um, if you want, you can also upgrade to two 16 gig sticks. I don't know if they have 32 gig sticks of that. I think it's 16 is the max that they currently have. If they do make larger sticks, you can upgrade to it. Usually there's no actual limit in terms of what you can put for the stick. Um, Windows maxes out like really high. It's like over 100 gigs or one terabyte. I don't know. Um, it depends which version of Windows, but there's no way you're going to get that on a consumer level laptop. All right. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this closed up. Just line it up. We'll push the bottoms here first, then work our way up the side and click everything in. All right. 
And there are, I'm not gonna say there's never like a max RAM thing, but 99% of the time, you're gonna be able to put whatever size stick of RAM you can afford. Um, it's not gonna have a limitation with the hardware. There are some really rare cases where that happens, but yeah, like I said, it's really rare, like 1% of the time. If you got 100 laptops, unless you specifically pick the ones that aren't gonna be compatible, um, yeah, you're gonna be able to use whatever size RAM that you can buy that um, is the same spec. So if it's DDR3 and that specific uh, clock speed and you get DDR3 and that specific clock speed, you can get whatever size you want. All right. Okay, so let's get all these screws back in and that's pretty much it. We'll power it up and we're good to go. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living, all right? Again, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot. If you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well, you can just say hi, you can say I came from this other video, whatever you want, and yeah. All right, let's flip this thing over, power it back up, and see what we got. All right, I actually didn't even power it up before changing on the battery, which usually is not a good idea because sometimes people bring me computers that are already broken and don't turn on. I do see the power light coming on. Again, we disconnected the battery, so it's going to be doing a BIOS reset, especially since we held the power button for 15 seconds after. Um, so be patient, let it do its thing. It's gonna take a while to start up. I can actually see that the power, oh, there you go. The power button light is on. So here you can see CMOS reset, all right? Press enter to reboot the system, like I said. And that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully it helped. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one. Or maybe I'll just wait to let it power up completely so you guys can see. You can see it's taking a while. There you go. There's the HP logo, it's spinning around. Um, but yeah, we should be good to go. There we go. Let's drop this. Bye.